Hey everybody, I hope you're having a good evening and a good week. I wanted to go ahead and come live and show you the Milfi 2.0. Da, da, da. And um, it's kind of cool. Um, as with all things, you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and start this so we can see some of the cool things and we'll talk about that since we're going to build up to pressure and that's going to take some time. Um, I would love for you to say hello, which means I need to get it where I can read the comments. That would be very exciting too. Okay, awesome. I see quite a few of you are on. So some of you may not even know what a Milfi is. A Milfi is pretty much the same thing as what an instant pot, they're both electric pressure cookers. So kind of the way that Kleenex is awesome, also known as tissue, or tissue is also known as Kleenex, and Kleenex is a brand, that's where you get some of the mix up. Hi, Miss Anita, so good to see you. Oh, thank you, Anita said she liked my new haircut. I feel like a grown up having my hair cut. It's very exciting. More than it should be, <laughs> in fact. So, while I'm starting to talk, I'm going to go ahead and one of the things I will show you just from the back end right now is you see it has this thing on it versus this is the older Melty that I have and it looks, you know, it's just a ceiling and venting thing. This has an automatic one and we're going to talk about that a little bit. Hi, Sherry from Gettysburg, um, Pennsylvania. You're familiar with the Milfi? Do you have one? I'd love to know it, and I'd love to know if anybody's tried this 2.0. And so you can see it has like this little cage on it. And we're gonna see the pressure release in a little bit. I did try this in my class. I think that if I go overhead, I can show you some of the buttons are just ever so slightly different. So we're going to go to pressure cook and we're going to take that down to just one minute because I just want you to see it happening. I have some water in here. I have four cups of water. And then here's something that you see here, auto, and you see pressure release. And we can do quick pressure release, manual pressure release, or auto. So we're going to do quick. And so I'm going to just kind of sit it where we can see it in the front camera for now, right? So that I cannot forget. We're going to be looking here. It's going to take a little while to build up to pressure. And Sherry says she does not have an electric pressure cooker. She has an air fryer. And that's great, too. Today we're going to be de demoing this. Milfi also has a crisp lid that I demoed a while ago. And I'm going to re-demo soon. And in fact, I'm going to do a specific crisp lid cooking class coming up as well. Don't have the date on that yet. So one of the things I like about Milfies is that they have a stainless steel inside, just like we liked about Instant Pots. And in fact, a six quart Milfie can be, you can use um, a six quart um, insert for the Instant Pot, and I've switched them around some. Um, I find the bottom is just a slightly bit thicker, and I like that. They're pretty hearty. And hi, Brandy, happy Wednesday to you. I guess it is Wednesday. How did that happen, you guys? I feel like it should still be Monday. Um, teaching a class on Sunday has me all discombobulated. So one of the things I do like is the instructions from Melthy. And I did find, too, that in this one, where is it? It's over here. Because I'm going to show you the accessories that came with things, too. This time they gave a really nice chart of pressure cooking times. On the back are meat times. I'm not even going to show you anything like that. So it's vegetables, um, grains, beans. Their bean chart is pretty close. They do lentils, small beans, large beans, whereas you'll see me talk about shorter cooking beans, lentils, shorter cooking beans, and longer cooking beans. Uh, so a shorter cooking bean would be something like a black-eyed pea that cooks quicker than pinto beans, right? Something like that. I know, time is flying. I can't believe it's almost February, like really almost February. So uh, I haven't looked in a while to see if Instant Pot has updated their time charts. They used to be wrong. 
just pretty much wrong. Now, beans, if you're cooking those, those are always the variable. So you've got to kind of, you may have to go and put your lid back on and cook them for a little bit longer, maybe add some extra liquid and do that. Um, what we're doing, if you're just joining, because, well, I didn't look over there for a minute. There's a lot of you there. Welcome. Happy Wednesday. What we're doing today is I am demoing the Milthy 2.0. And what you see here, this little cage over the venting and sealing part that you see here, that's one of the that's one of the things that I'm pointing out tonight. We may try a couple of other things, but what happens is whereas a lot of people are really nervous about letting the pressure release if they do it with their finger, if they do it, um, and actually some of the stuff that just came with this one has it too. So usually there's like a rice paddle and a little scoop, right? And those fit on there so you don't have to have your hand right where it is. So we could do it like this actually. This would probably be the safer way. We can pull out Mr. Dragon, wah, which we won't be doing today, but he misses you. So he says, hello. Uh, Brandy said, I didn't look with Nova or whatever it is I bought. I think I checked the instructions of the cooking guide. Okay, so Brandy did get a recent um, Instant Pot. I think I, the eight quart was the, my most recent purchase, and I don't think I even looked at the chart. But over an Instant Pot, and you can get these for different sizes, I can use this to redirect the steam so it doesn't come up and hit under the counter, and it goes out this way, right? Um, you can get a, if you're handy, which I am not in that way, you can get a piece of pipe at like Home Depot that fits over it and do the same thing. Uh, but I think it's important because I think sometimes people get Instant Pots, Milthies, any brand of electric pressure cooker, and then they're scared to use it. And the main reason they're scared to use it is releasing the pressure. And it is, um, it's daunting at first. And it's not like it didn't scare me when I first did it the first few times. It's just been, it's a long time ago now. Um, so I like this idea. And, I, and um, so what I've done with this is right now I'm heating up some water. We're basically doing the water test. And for everybody else, for me, I am going to make some tea. So I'm heating up four cups of water. After I get off this live, I will probably make a lovely Earl Grey tea for me to have tomorrow iced. But on here, in, a, in addition to, and let's see, I can show you on this one. I'm not going to move the other one because we're trying to cook it right now. But the buttons are really pretty much the same. Actually, I can show you kind of a side by side. The big, and so actually, yeah, the only difference is this pressure release button. And I mean, there may be some other differences. Let me look side by side. There's cancel and keep warm instead of just keep warm. And the settings are, are still have the same ones. I did see that they were talking about the slow cooker settings are more properly temped in 2.0. And I have not experimented with that yet, but I will be experimenting with it and then coming back and talking to you. Um, and if you have some questions in general about electric pressure cookers, now's a really good time to ask, just because it's gonna take a while for this to come up to pressure. And so we'll talk a little more in general. So I believe this one, uh, the 2.0 is about $98, $98, $99. Um, you can get some less expensive electric pressure cookers, but I don't think you can get anything cheaper that has some of these functions. It is kind of neat that, so what we did is we chose uh, to pressure cook. We chose to pressure cook for one minute. And then we chose between the pressure release. And so our choices were manual. Um, was it? Natural. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you guys. You know how I am after five. I'm a little ditzy. So it was basically like just 
natural pressure release when we don't do anything and it just met we come and the, the little things down and magically we can open it up and remember if the pressure isn't released we can't open this so there's nothing to be afraid of there right that's a way we can know that it's all good and safe to go and I see more people are on and so what we're doing is we are demoing the um, automatic pressure release that's new in Melty 2.0 and that's this one and we're preheating and working to get up to pressure and it's going to be very exciting that's what I say um, and you can kind of hear it starting it's very um, interesting it's taking me some time to get used to not checking to make sure something is sealed or vented that it happens all on its own um, the lid is still pretty sturdy. I will say that I have used it um, a second time after I dropped it and it worked just fine. So it was hardier. Yeah, it's totally not like the old stovetop pressure cookers. Um, and Anita is asking me, would you recommend this instant pot over this electric pressure cooker over the instant pot brand pressure cooker? And I think that kind of has to be up to you. Um, do I, I use both of them in my daily life. So um, I've been using this Milty for quite some time and then they just sent me this one last week and I've used it three or four times. I think it depends on what fits right for you, what you might find on sale. I would say the Milty and the Instant Pots I prefer over some of the others because they have stainless steel interiors. I do feel like Milty is um, doing a lot of work and I um, am in touch with their marketing person fairly closely, Anna, and um, I feel like they're really listening to the needs. I also like the way, um, so in addition to like the little rice cup and the paddle, plastic paddles that you get with Instant Pots as well. and it's coming up to pressure more. This is not as steamy as the Milty 1.0. So the 1.0, sometimes people got nervous because a lot of steam came out before it um, sealed. And this is much less than that, and now it's sealed. Okay, so in addition to the, in the interior stainless steel liner, the Milty, the detachable cord, We've got the plastic stuff. They send you an extra ring, and it's a, I believe it's a different, yeah, it's a different color. And so that way you can use one with sweet and one with savory. And I always encourage people to buy these so that it's really nice that it's already packaged in there. Um, you get your little pot holders, your little tiny lid holders, which is kind of nice. You get um, a rack just like you do in the Instant Pot, right? I find that their rack is a little bit higher this way, and that's kind of nice for cooking something underneath that. Um, so that's nice. And then they also, in addition to the ring, which the other one doesn't have, you get this nice um, stainless steel steamer basket. And it's really, really nice, honestly. And so it has these little legs, so you could choose to put it on top of the rack if you want to sit up higher, or if you're just going to use just enough water and it's okay if water touches under here, you could just put it in like that because it has these little feet. And I think that that's nice too. So I tend, honestly, not to be super brand hung up, but I do like the Melty. Um, I also have a stainless steel Milty on the stove pan that I'm going to show you guys, and I've really liked it. Um, I feel like they're working really hard since that Milty, I believe, has only been out a year or two. Um, and I could be wrong about that. It could be, that may be how long I've known about it. But I met them at the, okay, not saying... The quick pressure release is going to happen. So I'm going to put it up this way. And it's going to seem scary, but it's supposed to happen this way, okay? So don't. <laughs> ah, no, it's all fine. And see how far away I get to be from it, right? 
Now, what I would not do, and see it stops for a minute, and then it opens up. Stops for a minute, opens up. And I really do like the extras that come with the Melty 2.0 because I haven't checked on prices on these, but sometimes you could pay 20 bucks or 15 or 20 bucks for something like this. You might pay another $5 for a new seal. And so just to have all these things, because either A, you're going to need a new seal when you don't have one because it's worn out. And I've had that happen to me with the Instant Pot um, because I have extras that's not been an issue for me but if i was a normal cooking person i might only have one right so this kind of starts me up good and see isn't it kind of nice it's just doing all that letting go and this is the quick release i could also do one and it says on here it says vent and i don't know if i can catch it before it stops saying vent let's see if i can can you guys see that yeah it looks a little like utnut because you're not seeing the very, very top. <laughs> um, but up the top of that first one is, is a capital E. And then also I like the way on both Milthies, the way the red comes up a lot extra. So you can really see when it's happening, when everything's going. And see, I wouldn't be able to turn that if it hadn't released all the way. Okay, and let me show you just a couple of quick things too. Um, I was curious, and actually it's the lid I want you to see. Here is the place that pushes it, or that gets pushed, and it's from these guy, this guy here. I don't know what that guy, oh, I, that guy must have to do with the, um, I have no idea what that guy has to do with, but this one has to do with that, so it helps poke it and make it um, do its bidding. So what do you guys think? Do you think that having something that, um, I could see a couple of good reasons to use this. So I'm going to be taking this on vacation because we're going to be cooking on vacation. You can program it to do... Um, a quick release, a natural release, or a combination. And I have not done the combination. And so, um, so I'll look at this. I'm going to show you some of these things too. But th one of the reasons I want to take this with me on vacation is we're going to be cooking a dinner. And hopefully I'm going to at least do a live about a few of them. And so from the class I did two weeks ago about making dry... Um, one pot meal mixes in jars for your instant pot while well, I'm taking those. So if I was making the split pea lentil soup and we were going to be gone all day because that doesn't have vegetables in it, right? It just has the lentils and some spices. I could have the water and all that going in before we leave for the day. I can delay the start and I could even have it do a quick release or a natural release and then it'll go to keep warm. So if we come home later, that's okay. I haven't done that yet, so I'm going to be experimenting this coming week. But what I am going to do is treat it a little bit like I do the slow cooker, in that if I'm not sure if I'm going to be home in 8 hours or 12 hours, I add a little bit extra liquid. So we're going to be making like split pea lentil soup, we're going to make refried beans, we're going to make um, a soy curl rice like pilaf, that's a one pot meal. I can't even remember all the others. Um, and Anita's asking, does it have a delay button and a yogurt button? It sure does. So to me, it's got a multigrain setting. Most of the things like soup, meat, beans, poultry, those are ones your eggs, cake, those are ones you're probably not gonna use. A, some of them because you're probably vegan since you're watching me, or plant-based. The other is those are all variations of the main pressure cooker setting. And so you, they have kind of like low, medium, high that you can go on each one. Like the multigrain setting, I like the highest one because it soaks for 30 minutes in warm water, then it cooks it. So it's great for like spelt or oat groats or things like that. 
So that's what I like a lot about it. Uh, the yogurt function I use, and I use it for soy yogurt. I've used it for um, using pre-made milks with pea protein works because the thing about yogurt is it's not going to get thick unless the protein count is high or you use a lot of thickeners. So um, making almond milk is not an easy way to make yogurt, but you could, if you had some pea protein powder, throw that in and see how that works. Um, and it does have a delay start button and that's what I was talking about using. So if we're going to go, because you know we're going to Universal Studios you know I'm going to go see some Harry Potter or something. And wouldn't it be nice since they don't have vegan split pea soup that I can eat there at, you know, at one of the fun, uh, like Leaky Cauldron or one of the places to eat there. So maybe we'll go there and then we'll come back to where we're staying and we'll have a wonderful split pea soup all ready to go. So that's what I was thinking. So using the delay start, a little extra water, the pressure release will already be scheduled. Now, I could do the same thing in the regular milthy if that's what you have. I would just let it do a natural pressure release. So it's just one of those things. That's one of the things that I'm going to be trying. Now, with the soup, it's nice to have, you know, that you could do it either way. If I'm doing the rice with soy curls, that needs to be released quicker. So it'll be interesting to see. Now that has vegetables in it, so I'm not gonna let that sit all day anyhow because that's just not safe. So that, there's all some food safety things we have to think about as well. So Anita, it does have a delay button, a yogurt button, as well as the pressure release buttons. There's porridge, there's rice. And one of the things I do like, and this is what I was going back to, so they, they've given us a really nice little chart to start off with. I also, um, there's a little coupon, you could get $5 off um, a slow cooker lid part of it. And these guys, they have really nice visual instructions. And I love their getting started guides for everything. And so it tells you what should be in there, tells you what to look. You can also scan a QR code if for some reason all these things aren't making a lot of sense. They tell you exactly how to do a, a um, water test, which is what we just did, only we did ours at one minute instead of two. And it does tell you, it gives you little warning guys, like steam will rise from the vent and or around the float while your multi-pot comes to pressure. After pressure is reached, no steam should come through. And then on the back, it kind of gives you a little cheat sheet for other times. It tells you the maximum for beans and rice and the maximum for everything else. Um, and auto, here's where we can read about that that I haven't tried yet. The, uh, these are about the steam releases. Natural releases it on its own, which can take anywhere from five to 30 minutes which is why we're not doing that now. Um, quick, we did. And then auto, steam is released at a regular programmed intervals. And so that can take several seconds to three minutes, it says. So it's kind of the in-between. And it also says what we want to hear, that the lid, steel pot, rack, silicone gasket, and steamer basket are all dishwasher safe. But you should never do the base. The base cannot be immersed in water. This part, the stainless steel part, can. And so I just find this a really handy because when I got my Instant Pot, it was confusing and there was just this manual. And then they even have a cheat sheet on the basics, which I think is super helpful. And so it's like pre preset pressure cook, manual pressure cook. Um, saute, slow cook, pasteurize, which you can pasteurize homemade non-dairy milk should you want to then make it into yogurt. But you got to remember you might need some pea protein or thickeners, depending. Talks about yogurt. Um, on the back, it talks about the pressure cooking at high altitudes and gives you percentages, which is super handy. And then there's a nice big user guide. It's not... It's not those teeny things that you have to take a magnifying glass out. I mean, there's lots of information packed in there. Um, but things like, 
you know, your typical. It tells you what everything's called, what it's calling it in here. Tells you what these are. I think it's in the next page. I want to find one page to show you if I can find it. Here we go. So, you know, in my book, The Ultimate Vegan Cookbook for Your Instant Pot, I talked about all the different parts of these buttons. And so they're here. Um, another thing, if you guys don't know already, I have a new book coming out. And even though it says for your Instant Pot, it would work for Melfi or any other electric pressure cooker. So this book is Gluten-Free Vegan Cooking in Your Instant Pot, and it comes out next month. And it's just like all my other books. So in that, don't let the gluten-free scare you away. All my books have always had gluten-free options. Um, so just the same way. And before I would say use wheat flour or use a gluten-free blend. Now we're going use a gluten-free blend. But if you're not gluten-free, you could use like a whole wheat pastry flour. But, uh, or you could use regular pasta instead of gluten-free pasta. But most of them are whole food, plant-based, anyhow, so you're using mostly beans, grains, vegetables, and things like that, and we all eat those. Do you guys have any more questions about the Melthy 2.0 and the pressure release at this point? Because if you do, I'd be happy to talk to you about it. And also, there's um, a recipe booklet that actually has some recipes that are vegan, so that's helpful, too. Um, and if you've gotten a Milfi or any other electric pressure cooker, don't forget to go to plantbasedinstantpot.com and get some recipes. And I'm not seeing Anita. Do you have any other questions? Anybody else? Uh, hopefully, I will be seeing you soon. If you are in Chef AJ's group, I'm going to be speaking in Chef AJ's private group at 8 o'clock tonight doing some demos about the new book. So if you hang out with her, check it out. And if not, I will come back and check to see if you guys had questions later on. And thank you so much for joining me on a weeknight. Have a great week.